Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It is a beautiful day to sublimate onto something new, glass cutting boards. These are so gorgeous, don't you think? I'm gonna show you how to sublimate stunning graphics onto them to achieve this beautiful stained glass window effect. I've got several different methods to show you so you can pick the one that works best for you. So let's get started. So you might be thinking, Jennifer, you can't sublimate on glass. And you're absolutely correct. Sublimation involves heating special ink until it transforms into a gas and infuses itself into a material that's usually made out of or coated with a polymer. And glass is not a polymer, right? But while you can't sublimate directly onto plain old regular glass, sure, you can add polymers to the surface of the glass which will make it work. It's awesome. So today I'm gonna to show you how to sublimate onto two kinds of glass cutting boards. I'll use some manufactured for sublimation, which look just like these right here. And they come right with a special coating that you need to sublimate on so you don't have to do anything special. And then also some plain glass ones that you can get from the dollar store. We'll try several different techniques and I'll show you which one worked best and which didn't. You may be surprised, I sure was. Now, these stained glass style boards are so beautiful. You can display one on a counter, prop it up, like I have on my shelf here, or you can hang it in the window so the sun shines through. But they're not meant to be eaten off or used for food preparation. They're just for display, so keep that in mind. And speaking of safety, remember, when you sublimate, you wanna open a window and turn on a fan. Just to be safe, it's always important. Now that we've got that out of the way, you should know that this is not your typical sublimation project, and we're going to be using some new types of materials. Have you ever heard of sublimating with the help of laminating pouches, soapy water? See, I told you this was a different kind of project. You can get my full and detailed material list for this project below this video or over at jennifermaker.com 499. So you can create any of the designs that you see here. And speaking of a design, let me show you how to get my free stained glass files. Step one, get or prepare a sublimation design. If you need some beautiful sublimation designs, go to jennifermaker.com 499 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or enter the library. Search the page for design number 499. When you find it, click it to download the zip file. Inside the PNG folder, you'll find four stained glass style designs that I created with an AI art generator. Aren't they gorgeous? There are options for round and square boards, but remember, sublimation doesn't have to fit the item perfectly. There's a tropical beach, a dazzling sunset, a mountain stream, and an enchanted forest with roses. Before we prepare the file, measure your cutting board or sublimation blank, just in case the packaging isn't telling the truth. Also, check if one side is smoother than the other, because that's where we're going to add the design. Then, in Google Docs, open the image file that you'd like to use. I'll use the round forest scene. Now, resize your design to about a quarter of an inch larger than your blank, so it will go all the way to and over the edge. Step 2. Print your sublimation design. You're almost ready to print? Just follow my tutorial over at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation prints. Mirroring is really important in sublimation, but it depends on your materials and preferences for this project. Check my written tutorial for all the details at jennifermaker.com slash 499. No matter which technique you'll use, Trim the dried sublimation print so it has about a half inch border that makes it easier to work with. Step three, prepare and sublimate your glass boards. Remember, turn on your fan and open a window for ventilation. Yeah. 
If you want a transparent look without risk of scorching the adhesive vinyl, clear laminating sheets can work on your cutting boards too. And with these, you can view the design through the glass. So I'll use a non-mirrored design and have the smooth surface on the back. So first I'll check my sublimation cookbook for the settings, which says to set my easy press to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius. Lay the laminate down on your workspace and then place the cutting board on top. Trace around it and then cut the shape out. It should be the same size as your cutting board. Peel the laminate layers and set one aside for another cutting board. Put white cardstock on your pressing mat and then clean and dry the cutting board. Lay your cutting board on the cardstock with a surface that you'll sublimate face up. Place the laminate shiny side up on the cutting board so it's aligned. Use some heat resistant tape to secure it and then lay white butcher paper on top to protect your heat press. Once the press reaches 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius, press the laminate onto your cutting board with light pressure for 60 seconds. It's enough time and heat to tack the laminate to the glass, but we'll finish adhering it during the sublimation process. And allow the cutting board to cool completely before removing the papers and tape. Replace the white cardstock in case it got anything on it, and then place your printed sublimation image face down in the laminated glass. Center it and secure everything with heat resistant tape. Lay fresh butcher paper on top and then press the cutting board at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius with light pressure for another 60 seconds. After the timer goes off, Place the Easy Press back in its cradle and allow the cutting board to cool completely before removing the papers and tape. Look at how beautiful this turned out. Isn't it gorgeous? For another option, we can use clear dye sublimatable HTV, which works to give a less shiny matte look. I tried two brands following the manufacturer's instructions, variations on my sublimation cookbook recipes, and some tips from online crafters. I'll show you the results when we compare everything, and there are more notes in the written tutorial at jennifermaker.com slash 499. If you can't find the dollar store cutting boards, or you want a project with fewer steps, Try a sublimation-ready glass cutting board with a polymer coating. I tested this square from one brand following the manufacturer's instructions. Heat the Easy Press to 385 degrees Fahrenheit and set the timer to 190 seconds. Lay a sheet of white cardstock on your pressing mat. Clean both sides of the tile with rubbing alcohol and a lint-free cloth. Then place it on top of the cardstock, sublimation coating up. We don't need to press through the glass because these blanks are designed for sublimation. Just center the mirrored image face down on the coating. Add heat resistant tape to keep the design in place, then cover everything with white butcher paper. Press the tile for 190 seconds. There's no need to add pressure. The weight of the press is more than enough here. When the time is up, place the press back in its cradle. Remove the butcher paper and let your tile cool completely. With these steps, my early tests had some uneven spots. To check if yours do, very carefully flip the tile over. Look through the glass for any light spots. If you see them, place the tile back down in the same position and then put fresh butcher paper on top. The old piece probably has ink on it, so don't use that. And then press for 30 seconds more. Once the board is fully sublimated, let it cool completely before removing the tape and sublimation paper. Now let's try another brand of sublimation coated glass cutting board in the round shape this time. These come pre-coated, so all we have to do is add our design. 
The instructions they provided were different, and I actually had better results increasing the temperature from their recommendation of 360 degrees Fahrenheit, or 182 Celsius, to 385 degrees Fahrenheit, or 196 degrees Celsius. I prepared it the same way and pressed it for 360 seconds with medium pressure, the same as the instructions. When the time is up, remove the butcher paper and let everything cool before you peel up the tape and paper. I really love this round shape, don't you? This is going to be so pretty hanging like a sun catcher in a window. Step four, show it off. There are a few different ways to show them off. You can reattach the rubber feet if you want to put it flat on a surface, or you can add hardware to hang it like a sun catcher in a sunny window. You'll find links to the hardware that I used below this video or over on my blog at jennifermaker.com slash 499. I think these cutting boards turned out so beautifully and I can't wait to see how one looks in my kitchen or hanging in a window. And wouldn't these make absolutely amazing gifts? Imagine being gifted a personalized stained glass window, maybe with a photo of yourself. How special would that be? Again, these are beautiful for display, but they're not meant to be used for food. If you do ever need to clean one, just gently dust or spray it with a glass cleaner and wipe it down and that's it. Now I mentioned earlier that I was surprised by the results and I really was. I'd used clear dye sublimation heat transfer vinyl in lots of fabric and wood projects with lots of success. I've also seen crafters use it with glass cutting boards with great results that might fade slower in sunlight than the other vinyl options but I just couldn't get it to work. I tested two brands using the manufacturer's instructions, my sublimation cookbook settings, and guidance that I saw in our Facebook group. The process that crafter Elaine shared worked the best, so thank you for posting, Elaine. It does take a lot of checking, though, so I want to find a really reliable process before recommending using sublimation HTV on glass. Now, the glass cutting boards made just for sublimation like this one here, are very easy to use, but they can get expensive. If you're making just a few for gifts or need to get something done fast and well, these are a great option. They're especially nice for photos, like the one that I made of Greg and I on our Hawaii vacation. Isn't that awesome? So many of my early sublimation projects on hard surfaces used laminating pouches and they really do work well. So using them to sublimate on plain glass cutting board works well, especially if you get the pouches on sale and want lots of light shining through. And you can view the texture of the glass, the, the texture glass that you can see here, or you can use the smooth surface on the front for different results. Surprisingly, our sublimation has a lot of variables. Please don't expect a perfect result on your first try. Learning any new skill involves experimenting and making more than a few mistakes, so have some extra materials on hand just in case. And while your cutting board sublimating skills may not be gift quality right away, remember that handmade gifts, even those that are imperfect, will still make someone smile. Now, if you want to learn more about sublimation in general, be sure to check out my sublimation cookbook at sublimationcookbook.com. Not only are the sublimation directions for glass cutting boards in there, but so are over 150 other sublimation projects, all with the pressing times, temperatures, and pressures, among many other things. It's a super helpful guide that I use all the time myself because it's hard to remember all those numbers. <laughs> Pick up your copy at sublimationcookbook.com. And if you have any questions about making sublimated stained glass windows or cutting boards or anything else craft related that you think I can help with, please let me know. Leave your question below this video or ask over at our group at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group and post your pictures too. I want to see all of your beautiful stained glass creations. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Thank you.